Hey y'all, I'm Courtney. And I'm Sarah. And this is Bonus Tipplers. The podcast where we read all the books we used to steal off our grandmother's nightstands. And then we drink about it. On this episode, we read Debbie McCumber's Navy Wife. There aren't any big traumatic like content warnings in this one, except for just like the existence of the American military industrial complex. A lot of like Navy hats. I feel like that Debbie saw Top Gun and was like, what if Goose and Maverick settled down and just had domestic lives? <laughs> um, it also has like a super, super cringe author's note that lets you know you cannot take Debbie McCumber anywhere. She is your most embarrassing aunt. I mean, it really is like an entire Lee Greenwood song condensed into half a paragraph. Yeah, so I mean, there's that whole aspect to it. But um, other than that, I mean, it's just people who need fucking therapy and who are always screaming and, you know, but not in a way that's particularly abusive. So much therapy. There's also an inexplicable scratchy 1960s sheer nighty that somebody wears not for sex and but just for bed. Yeah, like a super, you know, the kind, like super short that's got your titties up on a shelf and it's made out of that like that the scratchiest polyester known to man yeah. and she just sleeps in it that's so i mean her, for me that's a trigger warning yeah her nightgown yeah oh uh, her just nightgown hanging around the house hanging around the house with my tits out do 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 oh so this is our salute to the american military specifically the american navy and more specifically our loyal non-navy who i think hopefully are still listening to us and enjoying us because we enjoy them. We should have had them see if they got on the show and tell us all the things that are wrong with this yes. Navy Wife book. We'd be like, yeah. hey guys, you guys can go read Debbie McCumber's <laughs> Navy Wife. We'll send you the copy. I mean, it's and... not particularly good. We're not offering to let you have one of our good books. No. No, we're going to let you have one of the boring books. And what we would like from you is homework. Yes, we want to give you, Loyal Nine Navy, homework. Yes. Um, so, yeah, buckle up for Debbie McCumber's Navy Wife. So what are we drinking today? We are drinking a couple of things. One, we have Sarah's, you know, tried and true bathroom wine. Um, taken. It, was, it was raining, and I did not want to go to the store. I totally so understand. my mother, um, I, I, I hit her up for some more of her secret stash of wine that's in her bathroom. It's Bastianich Vespa Rossa. Um, it's got a B on it. It's very good. I was and thinking like sea bees, right? Sea bees. That's a Navy thing. And then I got a bottle of a nice Cabernet called Insomnia because one of our characters in this book makes a major life decision um, or tries to make a major life decision after not having sleep and being very stressed out for approximately two, like a week. Um, Bad decision, y'all. Here's, here's aunties Sarah and Courtney to tell you. Sleep yeah. and eat. And, like, calm down a little bit before you get that wedding license. Well, that also, but also don't threaten to leave somebody if you haven't slept in 14 minutes. Yeah, well, that minutes. too, that too. Um, Courtney, yeah, just good good advice. Never make life decisions when you're hungover or you haven't slept or you're hungry. Yeah. Or, frankly, when you're, like, what is she? Is she 20? She's 22. Oh, well, you should not make life decisions when you're 22. And mm -hmm. I, I know that some of you are young. You're like, I'm grown. I'm smart. I'm like, yeah, you are. But, um, and you are like a, you know, a beautiful flower. But maybe you should sit it out for a couple years <laughs> before The only you decision decide. you should be making is who to show your boobs to. Yeah. Show your boobs to everybody you want to, yes. but don't sign up for the military. Don't get married and don't buy a Dodge Charger once you sign up for the military. See, I feel like that this book just like the rest of our past two books, the Trans Am is implied. Well, it's just that they hadn't invented Dodge Chargers for, <laughs> for people who, who okay, <laughs> joined anyway. the military at the time. All right, so this is our first Debbie McComber book, and she is another kind of juggernaut in the romance and contemporary women's fiction world. So she was born in 1948. And six of her novels have become made-for-TV movies, and her Cedar Cove series of books was adapted to a television show of the same name. She was the inaugural win winner of the fan-voted Quill Award for Romance in 2005 um, and has been awarded uh, a couple of awards from the, uh, the RWA. Maybe we won't talk yeah, about that yeah, so much. Yeah, she won that, Rita. Yeah. So this is kind of cool. McCumber is dyslexic and has a high school education. We bring this up because most of our authors again, from this time period, have been college educated. And if you think about it, you know, that, that takes some money. That takes some, you, you got to come from like a probably fancier background. Mm -hmm. So she was determined to be a writer. And she sat in her kitchen in front of a rented typewriter and developed her first few manuscripts. And she was doing this while raising four kids. 
After five years and many rejections, she turned to freelance magazine work. So she attended a romance writers conference where one of her manuscripts was selected to be publicly critiqued by an editor from Harlequin. The editor tore apart the novel and recommended that she throw it, a, just throw it away, put it in the trash. Undaunted, she spent ten dollars to mail the same novel, Heart Song, to Harlequin's rival Silhouette. They bought the book, which became the first romance novel to be reviewed by Publishers Weekly. I love this spite story so much. Yes. Um, so, again, she has a very wide and varied kind of career. Like we said, she's got made-for-TV movies. This feels like a made-for-TV movie. Yeah, it does. So, again, she is, if you are into her, she has tons of books. Um, and, so. you know, to me, okay, I've never read her because I just kind of always assumed she was like a grandma writer. Like, her books always have, like, a field with a picnic basket or, like, some flowers on the cover instead of, like, some man titties. And um, <laughs> Yeah, they're so very florid. Maybe maybe there's, like, really good Debbie McCumber books, and I don't know what they are. So if, if you love Debbie McCumber, please fill me in. Um, but uh, this one did not really... This is cool, too, though. Well, yeah. She's a volunteer, mentor, um, active in fundraising for women's shelters and for literacy and medical research. She's a national board member for Warm Up America and was appointed ambassador for the Big Brothers Big Sisters. So she does a lot of, you know, kind of philanthropical work, too. Oh, good for her. Yeah. 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 So this book, this book. Um, this book is actually the first of a series. Once you read Navy Wife, you can then read Navy Blues, Navy Brat, Navy Woman, and Navy Baby. That's Navy a lot. Navy Baby, you'll be true. Wasn't that a, was it Navy Baby? Was that the... I, I can't remember because mostly I'm just like filled with hate for <laughs> books with babies in them. Sarah doesn't like a baby book. I don't like a baby book. They're not my favorite either, but, you know, mm-hmm. if you like a baby book, that's your jam. And you'll have to go through like four other Navy books yeah. to get to that. Um, and I'll tell you, that baby probably sprang from the sea because these <laughs> baby dudes love the sea. They do. They would fuck the ocean. I mean, I'm sure they do fuck the ocean when they're off screen of this book. You know, so. What happens on the frigate stays on the frigate. <laughs> Well, let me read you the back cover of this one. Um, Impulsive, wounded, vulnerable, Lindy Kyle was unprepared for a roommate like Rush Callion. Strong, sensitive, and sexy, the temporarily dry-docked naval officer was everything she ever dreamed of in a man, in a husband. But Rush placed duty to his country above all else. Though he and Lindy were swept away on a tide of passion, he was called back to sea. They say absence makes the heart grow fonder, but will their marriage survive their partings? Lindy, you're a fine girl. What a good <laughs> wife you would be. But my wife, my lover, my lady, is this the... Yeah. This dude fucking loves the ocean a lot. He does. Yes. Um, the cover, we actually have a, a reprint. This was originally like a, a, like a, silhouette, a silhouette series. Yeah. Like This is still published by Silhouette, but it was like, you know, with the series cover. And it's, yeah, it's very Officer and a Gentleman. Yes. Love lift us up where we belong. Like, Lindy looks like... A less trashy version of Deborah Winger. Um, yeah, our dude Rush has on the naval officer uniform, but not the white one. I mean, did they? Why? Why didn't they? The white one is objectively the hotter one. The white one is the hottest one. Like, oh, I think yeah. we could do a ranking of the hottest dudes in the white, white uniform. I mean, obviously you've got Richard Gere, but then you also have from the Veronica Mars reboot when um, Logan has on the white officer's uniform. When I went to um, spring break at Daytona Beach as a far too old library school student, there was a whole table at a restaurant we went to of the youngest naval officers you can possibly imagine. They're like little fetuses with little hats on, but they obviously knew that that, that uniform is a pussy magnet. Oh, like, see, the, but that's, what is that? Yeah, that's, the, the, there's a name where people get irritated when people go in their places with their uniforms. Well, I know exactly why these dudes were doing it. I, it's because they had nothing else to offer. Like, their mustaches were like that middle school mustache. Mm. But, I mean, I'm sure that it was very effective for I them. I feel like so. you see that uniform and you're like, yeah, I'm at that seafood buffet table. I'm just going to, like, knock over the hush puppies and, like, yeah. just, like, roll around on the table like Tawny Katane. It, it was Daytona Beach. So, I mean, like, it, not when we were there, but... But it could have happened. 
But so the cover of this book, um, uh, the copy that we have, actually, this is the only landscape book, um, you know, that's been, like, where the cover was replaced with, like, a, a landscape that I've really liked. I think this is a, a really good cover. It's got, because um, it's, like, everything is kind of off-center. Like, it's got a, a bridal couple in the bottom, and then, like, the seascape and the ship is at the top. It's kind of impressionistic looking. I really like it. I think that it's got, for once, a good cover that doesn't have, like, the clinch on it that they've replaced with something, like, more anodyne and more, like, palatable to the women's fiction crowd. I think it's cool. And the others do. They, they did recover all the others that to also like be this kind of landscape cover. Uh, so this book, we have to, before explaining the plot, have to tell you that there's an author's note at the beginning, which is the most embarrassing thing I think I've ever read in my life. That um, Debbie McCumber... Um, was, like, minding her own business with her friend, like, watching um, a ship come into um, to port, like a Navy ship, with all the wives and, and girlfriends and babies and all waiting. And she couldn't help it. She just put her hand on her heart and started singing God Bless America. <laughs> her friend, I assume, dived off the pier just to, just, just to do anything to get away. I don't know if she could swim or not. But this is how Debbie McCumber decided to start this book. <laughs> it's not like, oh, I was really interested in, like, you know, the emotional lives of, um, you know, Navy spouses. We'll go with, so um, used to be a periodicals librarian, and we do get this magazine called Military Spouse. But it's obviously just, like, just call it Military Wife. All the ads are for pink razors and chocolate. Like, it is, it is there are military husbands. There's lots of military husbands. But this magazine does not really know that. <laughs> like, it had, like, uh, tips for how to dress for the... For the big balls and stuff. Like, and they did not talk about how to get your tux right, all right? Like, it wasn't wasn't that kind of magazine. I just want to know about, like, I mean, that's all fine and good. But, like, if we're just somewhere and I get so moved that I just start singing a thing, like, how my friends would react to it. It depends on what you're singing. <laughs> if it was God Bless America, I would administer the romance novel slap. <laughs> if it's, like, come on, feel the noise, like, like okay, fine. fine. Oh, you know, okay. I mean, that seems in character. But, like, yeah, if you just suddenly busted up with God Bless the USA, no. You yeah. Would, I would just, like, I would assume that you were just having hysterics. And I only know one run. I was, in, when I was in the University of South Carolina marching band. You know, we'd always have a, there was always a patriotic show. Always. Every year you'd have a patriotic show. And that's fine. You know. Um, but one year they had, they, they flew, <laughs> they got him out of like his like cryogenic whatever chamber and brought Lee Greenwood <laughs> to perform. So I can say that I have performed <laughs> with Lee Greenwood. Well. Yeah. In public, would you say that? Or just, <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's, that's what I opened with. Like, hi, guys. I played backup for Lee Greenwood. <laughs> that's amazing. Well, I, I mean, have you been um, when, to these, like, troop homecoming things? Because I went uh, once with a friend, and uh, her brother was coming back uh, in the— Gosh, now I don't remember if it was Army or Army Reserve. It's weird. It was, like—I found it almost, like, a little bit— I don't want to say creepy to see, like, the families and their, and their interactions, but um, more creepy in that it, like, really brought home the fact that now in America we have, like, a military caste that does not necessarily interact with yeah. people who don't have anybody in the family serving. Um, because it was just, like, they obviously had, like, you know, their own Yeah, I mean, and you, and you do and, kind you know. of build your, like, especially if you're, you know, if you are in that... Versus the National Guard, that kind of thing. You know, this is basically the community that you're in. So, I mean, it's understandable. But but fewer Americans than ever have uh, family serving in in, yeah. in the military, and they tend to be like military families. Like, uh, you know, um, yeah. they tend to know the military their whole lives, right. and then like their kids. Know it. So uh, it, it's I find it like um, kind of disturbing, especially because we live in a um, we live ne right next to Fort Jackson. My yeah. husband works at Fort Jackson, um, and yet it's such a it's such a closed environment. I mean, especially uh, a basic training base because they don't let them kids out. <laughs> Yeah, they get to All get right. off on family day and on graduation day. That is it. They are not allowed, uh, you yeah. know, through that gate. But still, it's just um, it's very strange that it is. If you look on the map, it is a huge chunk of our city. I gotta, uh, yeah. I'm, 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 gonna, I'm gonna, <laughs> I can feel you starting to do a. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, it's just like it's not present in our our, no, our larger no, culture, no. which is I don't know. I think really bad for for society in and general. All I was doing is I, yeah, I could feel a. This could be one of the Sarahs, like I brought it to a. We're on a. It's a boat book. It's a boat book, so I can feel. The it's key. not boats. I know anything about that. It could be the. It's a keyed up present. So <laughs> rather than like tuning out for twenty minutes before we even get to the plot, I was like, 
Let's bring it back. I mean, my dad was in the Navy, but my dad was in the Navy in Korea. So, I mean, it's been a minute, okay? Yeah. <laughs> my brother was in the Navy. He was a search and rescue diver. That's um, so cool. He had, like, the craziest ship captain. Like, they did things that were, like, deeply illegal. Um, not to... Not to other people, but just, like, training <laughs> exercises. Not I mean, other I'm, people. I'm sure they did. But, um, so, like, his, they would do these, you know, man overboard watch, like, things. But he would just tell my brother, because my brother was the search and rescue person. He'd be like, all right. It'd be midnight. And he'd be like, just jump off this ship. <laughs> and he was, he said the scariest, like, thing he has ever done is because they have to do this man overboard drill. And, um... Again, this is not procedure, so don't people. I don't need people adding me like it is not what they do. Like this was the eighties, and he had like some kind of like you know kind of renegade guy. But he said like he had to jump off the ship and just be in the Atlantic or the Pacific in the middle of the night. And he said watching his boat, I like, cannot imagine go like get further and further. It's like watching away. your spaceship go away. Yeah. yeah. So um, that is my experience with the day. <laughs> Yeah, um, so keep in mind when we tell you what happens in this book that that was the way she started it, though. Yeah. That, like, that's how she set the scene is 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 your most embarrassing wine aunt, except <laughs> completely stone cold sober, busting into patriotic song. Not even like a patriotic song that we can all get behind, but yeah. like one like a religious one. So just you, you have to like maintain like that 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 thing yes and it's definitely so this is 1988 so it has also that kind of feeling about war movies or military movies that are made without a war so they had to come up with some way to put a right. a peril in this one actually does it fairly well i think but you know how it used to be in okay young people we did not used to be at war <laughs> There was a time before we were at war literally all the time, and they, but they still wanted to make cool-ass movies about fighter jets. So what they would do is they would make a movie where there's no war, but at the end there would be some kind of made-up fucking skirmish or some kind of black ops thing or some kind of, like, whatever. I'm thinking about, like, Top Gun and I'm thinking about, like, G.I. Jane. There's, there has to be some way for you to go and fight this war that's not a war. <laughs> right. Okay, let's get to the plot. Ah, let's get to the plot. Okay, so there's Lindy, and Lindy is heartbroken. She has broken uh, her her fiance Paul was a fucking shit heel, and she has to go like rebuild her life. So she moves to Seattle. This is our 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 second Pacific Northwest book in, mm-hmm. in like three, you know. So, and she has nothing, but her uh, brother Steve has said, why don't you just come and stay in my apartment? Because me and my roommate, Rush, are naval officers, and we are obviously never home, but still we pay rent for some reason. And um, then you can just, you know, take all the time that you need. It's fine. And I'll see you when I get off deployment. Uh, And Rush is not going to be there because he's deploying also. He's, He's sailing out, like, tomorrow. So she moves in, and she's like... She takes her little, she's got her little VW rabbit. She goes, I'm assuming cross country. Yeah, it's, it's cross country. Her mom, who is supportive, she's like, geez, mom, I can't handle you. Um, her mom's <laughs> We've like, all been there, haven't we? Her mom is like, well, I'm trying to do what's best for you. You need money. You need money. I just need you not to talk about Paul ever again. I'm 22. I have a computer science degree. I'll be fine. Um, so and it's yeah. 1988, so she will be. Yeah, so. so she, like, yeah, she's in the apartment in her inexplicably sheer and itchy nighty. And she's um, uh, she's been like applying for jobs and stuff. Like yeah. she's doing what you should be doing when you like move into a new city, like knowing nobody. Yeah. And she's minding her own fucking business. And then Rush, Rush, we open with Rush. He's on the bridge. He's on the bridge. We don't know what his rank is. No. It just says officer, which is, by the way, crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and so he's just like, I'm on the bridge, and something's wrong with the catapults, and so. They have to, you know, they have to dock. He was re- he was ready to go to the sea. The sea was ready for him. The they sea had was a- his mistress and his wife and his <laughs> lover and his extra side <laughs> They piece. had a date, but, you know, they had to go back to the shore, and he's like, damn it. So he buys a six-pack of beer and goes back to his apartment. Six-pack ha- of 80s beer. Has the two, two beers and is feeling good. And then he sees this woman come out of um, Steve's room, and I guess, like, Rush just completely forgot that Steve was uh, fucking at sea, too. And he's like, who's this bitch? I'll get her out of here. Steve can't handle this. And, you know. Well, okay, so Steve has also, everybody in this uh, the entire book has just come off a terrible breakup. So Steve's heart has been broken by his girl and. Carol. 
We don't know what's okay. happened with Carol and Steve. Well, I think they're another book. They're so the we should. Book. Yeah, they're the next They could book. be Navy Baby. Who knows? Oh, God. I hope not. But so, um, yeah, so he's protective of Steve, and he jumps to the conclusion that this is some gold digging hoe. Who is this hoe? He thinks, yeah, he's like, he is the Richard Gere character, and he's convinced that Steve is that other guy who kills himself in Officer. Well, he Cinema clearly he has trapped. this, and we have had this in other books. He has the superpower that only men in romance novels have. They can get drunk enough to have like problems in their life off of two 80s beers <laughs> they can still two get like enough, but they can't remember yeah like how do you how do you drink two cores a and not have to get up to pee so much you can't really like you know even relax yeah. until you're drunk and then like how do you no that you're you're just making up excuses for your behavior at that point because all you got was lightly hydrated he like he gets real aggro with her. And like he's an asshole and doesn't give her the chance. Although she does not take the chance no. either to say I'm Steve's sister. Yeah, <laughs> so she just you know she's she's gonna do a storm out and then finally like she's getting into her, her Volkswagen rabbit and is like I just, I just I'm gonna tell Steve that you're the worst. All I ever heard from Steve was how noble Rush Callahan was. And he's like, wait, what? Who are you? <laughs> wait. You're Miss fucking sister, asshole. You're Lindy? And he's like, well, shit, come on back in. And she's like, oh, okay. And she drinks <laughs> milk all, like, angrily. Like, that's the thing. She's like, you've had beer, haven't you? Oh! And she's having her milk <laughs> while wearing a nightie where her tits are just straight up out. Like, if she you is slept in that thing? She is taking, like, they'd be so chafed. to be, like, marathon runner nipples is what it would be. Well, they, I mean, they wouldn't have even stayed in contact with the fiber. Oh they would have, like, run up in your ear. <laughs> there would have been another one somehow, like, it's just like nuzzled up on your mache, ankle. like, it's just like it just dissolved. Oh, um, it's just oh, oh, you know. So the next morning she gets up and she's like, he's hung over because he's had two beers. So she starts, she plays her rock cassette tape and is all, you know. Well, no, first he walks in on her in the bathroom, which why the fuck did you not lock your door? Yeah. I lock a door when I'm by myself in a house. And or, she just you know, asses out. She gets mad and then she stays like an hour in the bathroom. They only have one bathroom in this apartment. So this man has had to pee for <laughs> three, like three hours. Luckily, he has long since peed in the luckily, kitchen Luckily, he's like at that naval training. You know, he can hold a pee. Maybe he peed in the sink. He I peed don't know. in the sink. I mean, you know what? Good. I hope or he off peed. the balcony. I hope he peed in Lindy's belt because like you don't, <laughs> you don't, you know, you don't lord the bathroom over somebody. No, you don't. And then like, she's just kind of a, she's just kind of a bitch to him the whole time. And which I mean, because he was an uh, absolute he was an asshole, asshole like, to her. Here's like Rush's, Rush's move. The way that Rush works is that he does a really dickish thing and then he apologized for it apologize for it and then he's like the voice of fucking reason mm -hmm. like it's wild like, it actually pisses me off too like no, no 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 you don't just get to realize that you fucked up and then act like i'm crazy for being upset well she's she's crazy because she just she i mean she's 22 and she's petty um because she's 22 and she just does they just she does all these little things just to like you know it's like, just constantly passive him. aggressive yeah, yeah. Meanwhile, oh. but he is no prize fucking pig, all right? <laughs> yeah, but so he's he also had his heart broken <laughs> because, like, the, the Cheryl. classic, the the Cheryl. classic military um, mistake is that he married in haste and then came home, like, 13 <laughs> months later, and there was her seven-month-old baby, you know? Like, yeah, uh, no, exactly. that, I mean, seven months pregnant, baby. Yeah, you know? and then, <laughs> so, like... You got Steve, who has Carol issues. You got Rush, who's got Cheryl issues. It's a whole, like, again, this is like an extension of our Trans Am summer. Um, so, yeah, everybody's yeah. made poor choices when they had two cores. <laughs> they finally end up, like, coming to kind of a, a truce. Um, she goes job hunting, lands a cush job making bombs at Boeing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so keeping keeping with the military industrial complex, you know, she's going to be working in the family, so to speak. Yeah. Um, you know, she's very excited. She wants to go and celebrate. So they go to a pizza parlor where this was the part that just cracked me up. So they're at the <laughs> pizza parlor. She's drinking her, her pop. And they're eating pizza, and she's there's a Michael Jackson song on, and this is why you know that Debbie McCummer is the whitest person alive yes. because, like, at the pizza parlor, Lindy is snapping her fingers, and you know, white girl dancing to Michael Jackson. And does it say what song? I don't think no, it, does it doesn't say tell what us the song. song. Um, I like to say it's Billie Jean. 
And she's like, oh, I'd like to dance to this. And he's like, we're not dancing. We're not going to embarrass every other single person who's here (laughs) at this restaurant. Debbie McCurry is so the, like, the embarrassing friend. And I was like, this is, like, again, this is the whitest book. Because either you just full-on dance in the pizza parlor, or you, like, don't dance at all. Like, if you're going (laughs) to do it, then do it, like, Kids Incorporated style, where, like, you move the tables and, like, just fully own it. Or, like, you know, like, break it. Something like that. Um, That's not what happens happens here and it's just it's just embarrassing for everybody that, but so what happens is like they're having a good time and then something triggers her to where she starts thinking about Paul and we find out that she has not cried about Paul she's never cried about Paul so they've had a nice time drinking pop and eating pizza they come back and all of a sudden she's upset about Paul and she starts crying so hard that she throws up Rush holds her hair back it's a very bonding moment for mm-hmm. them um, so what he does when, while she's vomiting and he's holding her sweaty hair is, I guess, falls in love with her. <laughs> well, he also tells her that he's like, I've had my heart broken, too, you know, and she's like, no, you haven't. And he's like, bitch, I just I'm, I'm trying to share and you're just not having it. <laughs> um, so they kind of, again, they grow closer. She starts to catch feelings for him. He's like, Lindy, I've told you. My love is the sea. That's also, your, your brother is my best friend and he would kick my ass. Yeah, and and he is older. He's not like it, it's like the standard kind of romance novel age gap. Ten, is, yeah, yeah, she's twenty two, he's thirty two, which is not at all uncommon. I and, mean, like, well, my husband's nine years older than I am. And I think like it, it, like if you listen to the last episode, it's not as egregious feeling as that. No, one. no, no, no. Um, he seems more experienced in life than her, but their heartbreaks are similar. Yeah. And no, it doesn't. It doesn't feel gross or mm-hmm. anything. It just feels like, and of course, you know. Um, he just, he, he feels, I think, probably appropriately, somebody who is more mature. Yeah. I mean, not that every naval officer is more mature. I dated an Army captain once, and I can tell you they are not. But, um, you know, he just, he's been through more of life. The sea that. has made me more experienced, Lindy. I've seen things on the sea. In, In the, the sea, sea, if you know what I mean. The sea. And I think you do. So, yeah, so they're they're kind of skirting around each other. He can't get the look of her her ass in that um, that yeah. stupid nightgown yeah. out of his mind. That's haunting his dreams. Yeah. And, um, so they go and meet his best friend, da, 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 Jeff. Is it Jeff? There's a Jeff in this. There's a Jeff and his wife, Susan, who I think must have had a book because I felt like they there's a story with them. Um, and they've got twins. They've, they've got, got like, twins, Timmy and Tommy. Twins. Because, oh like, God. yeah, let's do that. Um, mm-hmm. I, I bet Debbie yeah. McCum- McCumber's kids have, like, a really fucking stupid thing names. <laughs> so, you know, Rush sees her with the kids and is like, Lindy is exceptional because but, she's holding a baby. But Jeff already knew because he was like, I want to see this girl that, like, yeah. Yeah, Rush says he's not, like, into, but he keeps talking about all the fucking time, you know. Yeah, so they know when your friends do that, right? They have a pleasant barbecue, and they come back, and on the way back is where they finally kiss. And, you know, Rush is into it, but then he's like, no, the sea. Um, you know, so they, they do a lot of that. The- also, I mean, you are obviously not over this bullshit. You just no. grew up. Crying yeah. about it. And I, I want you to keep in mind what the timeline is in this Two book. weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks total. We Before haven't even, we- like, yeah, well, not even two weeks yet. Like, it's like a week now. Yeah, we're on week one. So, um, there's, you know, the, that's the, the majority of the rest of, like, the, the, like, the middle section is, you know, him kissing her and then pushing her away, being like, the sea. And her being like, but, I, yeah, you're the greatest. The sea. But I care. The sea. And so, finally, they finally fucking, like admit their feelings to each other um there's no great well i think it's that he finds out that his ship has been fixed they thought that he had a month and they only have like another week and he says i want to marry you and she's like great let's get the license he's like oh, yeah he's, whoa, 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 whoa. i meant what i, I want to like, give you a ring and then when i get back or whatever. And, like, you know, let's give it a little... I've known you since Tuesday. And Lindy is like, uh-uh, buddy. And let me tell you, Lindy is, like... And the, th- uh, the one thing I do enjoy is that Lindy is the aggressor. Like, she is the sexual aggressor. Eyes in, this in the book. prize, Lindy. Like, she, there are points of the book where Rush is like, no. And she's like, uh-uh. She just keeps... She literally... Literally grinds this man down. Yeah. Like, she just uses her grinding power. God bless America. Um, 
During their courting, they go to a Marlins game. And what's wild is she gets box seats and he goes like almost as a favor. Like, bitch, those are like thousand dollar seats. Well, I mean, like, I don't know what they were in 1988. I assume it was three chickens and maybe a pig. No, I mean, like, that's, that's like. <laughs> she, she got them for free at work. I mean, yeah, like, because like, so, she works you know. for a place that makes bombs. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. She gets like the good seats. That's the free food seat. I know. Like, I will. We went to, my husband's a big Nationals fan. And this was back when they played at RFK Stadium in D.C. That's like a football slash um, baseball stadium that's now been, you know, torn down. Our seats were like box seat adjacent. And we watched this old man just who worked there, this old usher just berate this young black man who worked there. And you could tell that that kid was like, I'm fucking done. So when the guy left, he looked at us and he's like, hey, you two want to go in there and get all the free food you want? And we were like, (laughs) yes, we do. And he was like, go, just go. So that was my box seat experience because... Because of someone else's workplace strife. (laughs) Um, But it was cute because she's really into baseball. And, you know, he's laughing at her, though, for wearing jeans and a T-shirt. Yeah, like, she wore a Mariners shirt and hat. And he was like, what a fucking rube. It's not like a concert. Like, you you wear wear the concert of, like, the the tour that you're going to. You wear those, like, he's like, well, I like football. And he didn't. But it was cute because she knew baseball and he didn't. And you could tell, like, he was, you know. I know you're going to hate me. I, I watched, like, a million fucking Clemson games from box seats as a child and had no choice about it and <laughs> hated every minute of it because uh. it was my dad's company. So I was forced to sit there as, like, the bartender who you've met served all this free booze to everybody. Strong I can't believe Thurman they brought, would come in. I can't believe they brought the bar center. That's hilarious. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, no, that was their own bartender. Absolutely. It was, uh, and I had to go, and I hated every moment yeah. of it. And I know you're like, you, what, what, you know, sorry. But, um, yeah, so... You know, this is their courtship, and like we said, he asks her to marry him, but he, again, he wants to wait this, until he gets back from his six-month Well, and he doesn't trust, which is fair. I mean, like, not, I like that's not only does it happen all the time that, like, your uh, your girlfriend or boyfriend cheats on you when you're away at Oh, my court. God, yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, it actually happened to him. So, yes. no wonder he, he's not, he's like, I want to make sure you're still standing but, like, there he, under like, the pier. What's wild is that like, he never explicitly tells her the whole, like, she has to hear it from, like, parsed out from other mm-hmm. people. You know, but yeah, they're going to get married, which again happens all the time. And so, like, she wants to get married immediately. And and, and to be fair, I mean, there are really good reasons to do that. Although, usually not after two weeks. No. But, I mean, if you're not married, you are nothing to the military. So if you die on deployment, or if you uh, like all the the, the movie, housing benefit, like all this stuff, you don't get that lesson. Insurance. Is, that lesson is learned in the movie Navy Seals, where <laughs> the captain is his wedding day, and they get a call out, and so he doesn't ha- get to marry his wife, and then he's killed on the mission, and so the his mom gets the flag, and his fiance does that. I promise you that in real life they would have got that notary there. <laughs> I know. I know. Today, oh. in fact, I, I have a um, I. Somebody that I used to work with, um, her uh, fiancé was uh, joining the Air Force and, and was about to, you know, go and do a variety of different things. Like it, like an extended training, not like to be deployed. But um, so they wanted to have a big wedding later, but they went and found a notary. That's what I'm saying. You yeah. get the license now. You have the wedding later. Yeah. Um, so, all right. So they end up getting married. They have the courthouse wedding. All of his friends come. Um, you know, they finally do it. Yeah, they had a kind of like wait, gotten ready this to the edge. This but is they a do wait, wait for marriage, marriage but yeah. um, although the wait for marriage for two weeks, but is really not. Also, I don't think I don't. You don't get like there's no virginity taking. Mm-hmm. Lindy obviously was not a virgin, which I appreciate it because yeah, like, it doesn't put this big important on sex in this book. Which I yeah, I did appreciate that. It felt like a modern book in that. And in that then way. you know, so after they're like, it's the. They're doing it, the, you know, the night before he leaves, and then Steve comes over. <laughs> and Steve's like, what? Rightly so, like, what And he fuck? goes to punch his best friend in the face because his best friend has been, like, shoplifting the pone tang on his sister. <laughs> yeah. That, that's the Navy lingo right there. Shop no, that's from, the um, tag. That, that's from. No, it's Navy. No, I know. I know, <laughs> I know all the lingo. Um, so, Yeah. They end up talking it out. And Steve is the one who's like, this is all fucking stupid. You're going to regret it. You were just engaged to this guy. Like, he is like, he's being a dick about it. But he, yeah. this is the thing. All the dudes in this book make really solid points, but they're dicks about it. Yeah. Um, And so, Lindy, you know, like. And Lindy, by the way, has been not sleeping for the past week to spend every fucking waking moment with Steve. Yes. Or Rush. Oh, God. No, Rush. I'm sorry. Yeah. That's not that kind of book. 
No. <laughs> and so, the, you know, she goes and sees his send-off, and she's with Susan. And then, then the book actually gets good. Yeah. So what happens next is that Lindy goes with Susan to one of these, you know, she goes to, like, the Navy Wives Club. It's not a club, but, you know, like a, like a support group. And she meets all the women, and they really talk about the realities of what it is to be a military wife. And, I mean, like, Debbie, like, deep dives because they talk mm-hmm. about just, you know, just the, the psychology in it and, like, how they'll argue with each other and this kind of stuff. You, you find out about this one woman who, like, runs point for everybody else. It's very, she has researched it and talked to people. Yeah, yeah, I, I like this part quite a lot um, like because they talk about like um, oh well there's a rumor that the ship might be you know yeah, deployed to, Virginia. to like yeah to Virginia uh, and, and, and it, like Lindy has not even considered the yeah, idea that no she might have real, to quit her job you know she married a guy because she's 22 and it was romantic and now all of a sudden oh shit the real world has crashed down and they've been like well what are you going to do like you know okay if you're in the hospital like they talk about insurance and forms and like all mm-hmm. the realities so the next section of the book is her relationship with these women and then also like the letters that get written back and so forth so she's writing one big long letter that she adds to a little bit yeah. every day. and then she hears and okay she's not the brightest she hears that there's like a deadline to get these letters in and her dumb fuck ass thinks that like like it, she She's, has a fucking address. She sends it. She thinks, well, I couldn't get it because, again, she's 22. Yeah. She thinks that it goes to this person that... Like the ombudsman. Yeah, you know. that is supposed to, like, who does all the contact stuff. The Alpha Navy wife. Yeah, the Alpha Navy wife. The the, the HBIC in charge. You know, HBIC Navy wife. Um, And so, yeah, this is, you know, back, back in the 80s. Um, you know, they only get the letters once a month because they're at sea. And so... And there's no other way to contact people in a normal way. Yeah. Uh, like, there's not... So uh, so there's this... Um, the, this <laughs> well, hold on. Well, like, the first month comes, and everybody's gotten letters. Everybody has letters, except for Rush. And it's a big deal back then. I, I mean, it is, really but also, like, deal. Rush is being... I mean, I know he's got his past trauma, but he is just, like, fucking... I'd be disappointed and mad, too, but Jeff is telling, like... The thing is, is Jeff's wife is telling him all the things that Lindy has been doing yeah. with them and that she's part of it. And he's like, clearly there was a mistake. Something happened. Yeah. But you don't know, freak out. Right. All Rush can think is like this bitch, this trifling bitch. I bet she's pregnant. And so with some other dude, like, what, what, huh. like he gets, I mean, you did only know her for two weeks. He gets I mean, so assy that like they have to call in the Navy chaplain to talk to him who like between him and Jeff. Especially arranged this ship to shore call. Yeah, like through a ham radio operator in Alaska. <laughs> yes, and so they're just. And it's actually really funny. They're because, arguing, but like, you're supposed over, to say stop or after over, yeah. Yeah. over. <laughs> so he's like, "Just one question: Are you pregnant?" Over, and she's like, "Look, asshole." What? Else? She's like, "What? What? What's happening?" Over, and like finally they talk it out. And she's like, "I'm such an idiot. I sent it to like I sent it to Julia and not the ship." And he's like. Oh, that does sound like something your dumb ass would do. Over. <laughs> and so, you know. And <laughs> Meanwhile, the poor ham radio operator is like, oh, he's a fucking Really, we're using this for this. Like, Bring this me a course. <laughs> this is the thing. I need to get fucked up. Bring me one and a half cores. Um, <laughs> that's the exact right amount that'll do it. <laughs> well, okay, so there was this PBS, um, one of those kind of reality documentaries uh, called Carrier about, like, life on an aircraft carrier. And this is, like, oh, it's probably 10 years, 15 years ago now. And I, I, I gave it to my dad because I thought he would find it really interesting. Uh, and he was fucking furious to find out that sailors then, like, and I guess now, can just make video calls. Oh, yeah. Because, <laughs> of course, like, you know, back in the 50s, you would maybe get your mail. Maybe. Like, a boat would come by yeah. and, like, maybe your mail would show up. Or maybe, I, it maybe it would be in the wrong ocean. Who knows? I remember. Yeah. God, we thought this was going to be a short episode. I remember when we went to go see my brother's ship. It was about, you know, it was that time when, like, I, me and my mom and my sister— could look at it. And then my dad got to go take, like, the big full tour because we weren't allowed on the ship. Why weren't you allowed on the ship? Because we were women. Really? Yeah. Like, it was that, like, that was before they wouldn't let women on the I ship. I I guess, like, uh, my husband's talked a lot about, um, and, I mean, he did just talk about him and his brother, but they would go on time. Well, I think we, could got, we could go on the, I think we were allowed on the deck but, like, to go down into the ship, we were not allowed to do they that. They probably assumed the sailors would eat you. I was very cute and eight years old and pigtailed. That was adorable. Well, so, you were, because I mean, like, my husband yeah. talked about, like, the Tiger Cruisers and, like, they would show movies in the dining hall and stuff. Yeah, that, that's and what he the, and his brother were boys. I wonder, do they not take the girls? I don't know. I don't know. 
I, I was just, yeah. I remember I was on a lap. Anyway, maybe our law of dying maybe could be like, or did they just yeah. told you that because they didn't want you there? Yeah, possibly. Um, or it could have been that they hadn't seen a female in so long that they would have literally. Well, my, my, my sister was older and she was like, my sister was the queen of the 80s. So like she was, she was the Molly Ringwald, like, you know, Charlotte's <laughs> answer to Molly Ringwald. So probably it was like for that protection, sir. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Anyway, so what we have for the next little bit is back and forth, back and forth on these letters. Um, and, and I do like a letter book. Like a, you like love a letter book. And I didn't know that until we started this podcast that like any book where somebody goes like especially off to war and they have to write letters to each other. I don't know. I just really I, yeah, something about nice. it I really like. Um, and then then and Steve comes around and he takes Lindy out to dinner and he apologizes and you know tells her that she's going to be a great Navy wife. Blah, blah blah. She's asking about Carol. He's like I don't want to talk about it. So obviously Steve and Carol get a book. Um, because and at some point Carol calls. Yes. So we yeah. then get a. Lindy is at work. It's about. It's about. It's almost to the end of the tour. Two like two they're like two months because like, because he has six weeks left when everything happens. So he gets she gets a call from Steve and he's like, all right, um, okay, the the Mitchell the ship has been in an accident and she's like, oh god, you know, obviously, and he's like. All right, you need to come home. And he's like, are you okay to drive? And she's like, yes. I was like, no, go pick a bitch up. Like, yeah. She's, 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 she's not okay to drive. Yeah. And so she gets she gets back to Steve, and then she goes, and, like, she's with the the Navy wives, and they're just waiting. And, you know, it's like, I mean, again, it's like, you know, they all have this shared experience. And they find out five men have, like, five people have died. And then, so they're waiting to see if it's one of their people. And it was, it was something that it really could have been him, yes. even though, like, it's a plane. Because what happened, a plane crashed into a bridge. So it wasn't, like, some kind of, like, you know, like in... Like MIGs. There were no MIGs. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, because I love the fuck out of a MIG. Like, um, I'm always ready for, like, a MIG fight. Um, well, and they were headed to the Persian Gulf, um, yeah. which, which actually was, like, weirdly... Because pre- she was really worried about them going to the Persian Gulf. Yeah, I mean, and, and there, was had, like, there had been the... Oh, God, what was that ship that um well, that got blown up? I, so she was she was worried yeah. about the Persian Gulf, like, like even before... Well, because that's we right decided, We hadn't time. been in a war yeah, long well, enough that we had to make up a war. Yeah, but... So, anyway. <laughs> so... She's hanging out, and she finally gets word, like, you know, from Steve. Steve is with her, and he's like, all right, he, you know, Jeff's alive, but um, Rush is missing. And so the next, like, 24 hours are just pure agony. All the Navy wives who know that their husbands are okay, you know, they could go home, but they stay with her. Mm-hmm. And, it's, you know, and, and so they're staying with her until she gets news. And they find out that he's been injured and that he has been flown to the Navy hospital in Hawaii. And she's like, I'm going. And so the way, then we get, like, his point of view. And um, he wakes up, and there's Lindy looking like ass. Like, you know. like well, She was doing the sleep by the hospital yeah. bed thing. Yeah. And that's, you know. And so he's awake, and they have their reunion. And what's happening is, like, for the week or so that he's in the hospital, she's there the entire damn time. Like, she does not go home. She doesn't go to the hospital, like, to her hotel. Nothing. Like, she needs that chaplain that, like, was helping him out. Like, no, like, nobody went with her. Yeah. Like, Steve should have gone with her. But, like, so he finally gets out of the hospital. Again, this bitch has not really eaten or slept in what's going on now, like, two weeks. They bang it out. Um, and then they're talking, and she's just assuming that he's going to come home with her. Yeah, and, like, oh, and then she has, and I mean, come on. She has the nerve to say, I want you to leave the Navy. Yeah, and again, she has had. This is what I was talking about, like like major decisions. She has had no sleep. She has not had any real food. She is still in the midst of trauma, so her brain and her serotonin levels are not anywhere, whatever. And instead of being like, okay, you know what? Like nobody in this, like nobody has said, let's let's take a beat, let's like pause, dial it back. We will revisit stuff after we all have a really good night's sleep. You eat a fucking steak because you have only had like. Skittles for the last week or whatever. So Whatever's like, in the vending machine. Yeah, hospital, like, right? and she's like, and he's like, I'm not. And again, he's he's a dick. And he's like, I don't want to spend my last night. You know, I want to be fucking and not arguing. Um, and but then he. Died. And they've actually talked before about how people always get in an argument yes. right before they leave because you've you've been trying to like. Yeah. Make things nice for your spouse yeah. this whole time. And you've been hiding the things that you're upset about. And then they finally come out with your anxiety. But in other, yeah, in other yeah, things. Yeah, so it comes out, you have a big old fight about spoons or the milk or whatever. Right. When really what you mean is like, uh, I don't know, we're having problems with debt or whatever, you know. Yeah, so um, 
you know, he, he basically tells her, he's like, look, what you're asking is really unfair. He's like, this has been my life for 15 years. And she's like, well, I want to be your life now. And he's like, this is what I do. Again, like you're trying to change a part, like something that is intrinsically who I am. And he's like, no, I'm not doing this. And then she says, and I think she did know at this point, she's like, well, I'm not going to be there when you get there. Yeah, she threw an ultimatum at this point. Yeah, and she also says, like, well, I'm just not going to be at the, like, homecoming. And and so... And Which was the big thing with Cheryl. She knows by now, yeah, yeah. That, uh, that, 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 that his ex was not there. And, and then, he went and he found her in bed. And then her. the thing is, is, like, you know, he's on this boat for another, you know, six weeks, and she doesn't write any letters, nothing. Like, just zero contact. And, you know, she's telling Steve, and Steve is just like... I'm sorry, the dog who's snoring in the background has its eyes open. (laughs) Yeah. Um, You know, so... Big nap energy here. Steve's trying to talk sense into her. Susan's trying... Like, Susan's finally the one that talks some sense into her. You don't really know what's going to happen, because... Rush, like, you know, he, he's actually, he's so sure she's not going to come that he's decided to take, like, whatever watches, like, you know, so he doesn't have, like, he has to stay on the ship. Yeah, while everybody else gets to have the big homecoming, he's on the ship. And he, but he does, he looks out and he, he doesn't see her. To be fair, maybe she just was afraid that Demi McComber was going to be there. <laughs> And so finally, when his thing finally ends, she's there, and she's like, I'm prepared to be a Navy wife. And he's like, well, my, you know, conveniently, my re-upping for 15 years papers are up, and, you know, I could I could quit. And she's like, no, and, you know, they fall into each other's arms, and that is the plot of this book. You know what she decides is that she loves the fucking Navy, and the Navy loves fucking her. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. I knew I was going to use that somewhere. You had to. I, I did. To. I did have to. So that's that's this book. And so obviously it has that kind of 80s, like, love of the military in it. It has, like, that very, oh, you know, serious romance blah, 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 energy where yes. everybody just needs to go to therapy. Oh, my God. So much therapy. It's not a terrible book. It's, no, it's just, um, no. Yeah, it's just... It is for hard for me to get past, like, the, you know, just the jingoism and Which the, brings up questions. Yeah. It brings up questions. But so... Maybe we should take a break for Lee Greenwood. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, can you call him? Does he? Do you still have his number? Well, I don't. I, you know what? I, I, I lady Does he does, answer your calls? A anymore? lady doesn't play back up and tail. So, <laughs> like, you know, who knows what me and my clarinet are up to with Lee yeah. Greenwood? <laughs> <laughs> just there's the clarinet is somehow so much funnier to me than if it were any other instrument, except for the fact that, you know, what I... What was the bassoon? The I bassoon played, is apparently funnier. I played the French horn in, the, the in band, and that, that that is more ridiculous. I don't know if it's funnier. It goes bassoon, clarinet, tuba. No, no, no. Yeah, I was going to say... Tuba's... O- tuba. Like, here's the thing. Tuba's obvious. Tuba's yeah. the obvious joke. This thing. is too... Yeah, it's too whatever. Yeah. You got to go, like, the subtle joke is the bassoon. Mm, I agree. And then, <laughs> you know, clarinet, just because the there's a whole... Yeah, the clarinet. You, you know a clarinet girl when you meet one. Yes, you do. Yeah. I have. I still have my clarinet. I still have it. It's got you bring my... bring it on special occasions? My, my Beatles stickers on it. Well, see... Now we're now we're really like in the weeds because that's what we do. We take simple things and like turn it into the weeds. But so I played clarinet in marching band. My principal instrument, the thing that I was actually really good at, was bass clarinet. Mm. So I also had one of those, but I sold it to the school and I left. No. That's cool though. I always think the people who play the other variants, like you know, yeah, I could play. I played bass clarinet and then like the different saxophones besides the alto sax. You know, yeah, I, I could. That's always cool. I could also do on like rare occasion. I would do the um, contrabass clarinet, and the contrabass clarinet was always more difficult because like it required two key readings. Oh, and so like because you know clarinet and bass clarinet are in trouble, and contrabass is in bass. So it was always like I would say it's cool to play piccolo, but that means you're just doing a lot of John Philip Sousa. <laughs> You know, like well, that's all you're ever really doing in marching band is, like, and that's what our patriotic show always was was just John Philip Sousa. So anyway, that's a dig- Lee Creamwood. That's a digression. <laughs> Let's go to questions. All right. So question time: Big dick energy or big dick energy? I, I have, it's hard for me to parse him. I, I'm at, like okay, so I'm I kind of guess ambivalent with him. Yeah, like, I agree. Um, so I think what happens is like he is, she gives him the typical romance hero 80s thing where he's like hyper aggro, 
But then he always dials it back, apologizes, and like you know, we said this yeah. earlier, then he like is kind of the voice of reason. He, he is pretty mono- emotionally mature once he gets over his. <laughs> like he's the guy, you know. He's he's kind of like my husband in that, and I think maybe a lot of people like not just him, but like you got it. Here's the here's the problem: is that Lindy is twenty two, and she doesn't know how to argue as an adult yet, and so. What happens, and I mean, he's, you know, 32 and is still like, you know, he's a Navy, a, a Navy 32 in yeah. this book is a person, you're like a, a civilian 25. Yeah, I would agree. So what happens is that he snaps and gets all pouty and like, you know, huffs. He gets in a huff and he says shitty things and then she pokes at it and just makes it worse rather than being like. Okay. Neither of them know how to de-escalate a situation. No, they're, they're both it's something that you learn as an. Adult. They're both escalators, and she's always just picking at him and making things worse. And I like him when he is being like the rational one. I, I wasn't. He's very like he runs very, and it's not in that Nora Roberts way where because no. she like hyper focuses on the the female characters. I feel like, again, this is a silhouette. You have less than 300 pages. You got a lot of shit to get in there. So I feel like he's just kind of like, meh. I don't know. And I think also it's hard to do because there's so many really fucking hot Navy dudes in our popular culture (laughs) that like. Yeah, what makes him different? Yeah. You know? Right. So he, I don't know. I feel like he's just like, meh. And I mean, I, I appreciate that uh, his trauma seems realistic, honestly. Well, I mean, of course, it it is genuinely realistic because, like, how many, like, military divorces are there? All the military divorces, yeah. you know? I mean, it happens very frequently. You marry your high school sweetheart, you come home, find that she's cheated on you, and you still owe the note on your daughter's charger. So, I mean, you know, it's a, it, that, that's just like a, you know, tale as old as time, right? But, um, so that's the thing that happens to a lot of people, and it happened to him, and his response to it seems rooted in reality, that he has a hard time trusting people. Yeah. You know, fair? Yeah. I mean, you know, and especially when she goes, and at this point, she knows that he was stood up on the pier. Like, what she did was so fucking mean. Yeah. I, mm. Like, so, he almost died. He almost died. And, you know... She's just... Well, that takes us into would you talk shit with her about the heroine? I did not like her. She she's is very young. And the thing is, is, like, she's... You know what? It's not just that she's young, because our last heroine was young. But, like, where she was more naive, she was nice about shit. Like, Lindy... Get, I mean, but I also, I feel like Lindy's just... Uh, Lindy's a little bit of a spite queen, but if she had been more... Full on in her spite queen, I would have enjoyed it. Well, and that. I wonder if that's because this was originally a serious romance. And so there's yeah. not a lot of space. So, I mean, often we think that the men are underdeveloping this, but maybe the woman is underdeveloping yeah. this because she does two unforgivable like things. She gives him the ultimatum that he needs to leave the Navy. Yeah. But like, he's known the Navy a whole lot longer than he's known her. And, and then she doesn't go at the dock. I feel like, yeah, she is the reverse Nora Roberts character. But it's like Nora Roberts just kind of gives you like... A, you know, like, just a dude. Hmm. I feel like Debbie was focusing so much on all the Navy stuff and the Navy culture that she just gives us, like, this girl. Like, I don't care one way or the other about Lindy at all. Like, whatever. She's just there. Like, her characteristics are essentially just, like, well, like, her job. So, I mean, okay, so she makes bombs. Yeah, she makes bombs. And, <laughs> um, but, like, what else? I, she's into baseball, but I... I Okay, she's not well enough drawn that I thought that she'd be yeah. into baseball before she got None, the neither, that's, of her beginning of baseball. That is my other thing is like neither one of these characters and are well like where I like I, I'm not invested in them. I'm invested no. in the larger relationships that they could create. Yeah, like Debbie does a great job of creating a community. Um, but I don't care about them individually. Like, I just, in general, I don't want people to cheat on people. I don't want people to marry people they don't love. I don't want people to give people ultimatums that aren't fair. Yeah. You know, like, I, I don't want those things to happen for anybody. Yeah. And that's that's not really a substitute for caring about characters, though. Yeah. I just didn't care about them. So, okay, back to Elda Bitch. This is a really good one because yes. like, we do have the best part of this book is are the Navy Wives. Um, because when she goes to the first meeting, you know, it's these, like, this group of women, um, and they really kind of tell her like it is. Like, again, it's kind of a Lindy grow the fuck up moment. Mm-hmm. Um, 
because and she she grows up real fast in yeah. about five minutes in this meeting. Yeah, because yeah. they're really talking about what it is to be a Navy wife. Um, you know, they're talking about this, like, the one thing that I kind of do, I guess, disagree with, especially for Susan, is, and again, I, you know, I, I, this could be a true thing. Like, it was this whole, like, never let them see you cry, never let them see you upset, yeah, it feels like an emotionally immature way of approaching military because they're so them. because they're so you know stressed. They need to go out there without that on them. I, I think it's you know yeah, I don't I think that's it. emotionally healthy for anybody but to, like, to yeah. feel that the, the country relies on me to not show any emotion. Otherwise, we're all gonna. Right. Cold war? I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, know. but like, but these women are just like, you just take it and like, that's fine. And I think, like, okay, I, I get, yeah, I get, like, I well, said. when they actually like go through what happens, the, the result of you just taking it is that you have this giant fight right before he yes. leaves because you have been trying so hard to make everything perfect. Right. You've been hiding the fact that like the neighbor's tree has scratched one of your shingles yeah. off and the, you like, you've had and two probably- roofers go. I'm sorry, I'm having problems in my personal life. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think it is probably very rooted in reality. I yeah. think that the, the women in this, like, again, the real, like, romance in this book, like, Lindy and Rush are a device to, like, see how this works, and that's the great thing about this book is, and it probably is because if you think about the other things that we have that are Navy, it's always couched in, like, you know, the the female characters in Officer and a Gentleman are kind of, like, dirtbag trying to marry people, like, just for their like, and like in Top benefits. Gun, like why is Kel McGill's even there? I mean, she's just there to be, uh, to to be like no homo. I yeah, guess. yeah. Was, you know, the real relationships in Top Gun are between the the aviators. Yeah. So. so I think it is really like I love that part of it. So I do think that it does like it it with flying colors probably better than most of the books that we have done. It passes back to Elvis. Yes, absolutely. I will give it a top marks on yes. that. Um, I and, and I mean, I, it is not unusual for people to have like whirlwind shotgun weddings, like in this military environment. It doesn't mean that I think it's a good idea, though. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god! So, and that was difficult for me is trying to separate my my personal emotions in this book because obviously, and I mean, like I said, my husband works on a military base. Yeah. Um, and he grew up as a navy brat, and I somebody has to be a soldier, but. I'm really deeply uncomfortable with just the the general like idea of why we fight our wars. And this book actually talks about this a little bit, um, like you know, and because he's like, you know, I I lay there in the hospital bed. And I was like, why were we even fucking there? But it doesn't really go into yeah. it. But so when I think about like her and her decisions, um, they are kind of wrapped up in my like, you know, I would never marry somebody like that because partly because they're beholden in their their yeah. ethical decisions to something that like they may desperately disagree with and have to do anyway. So, yes, I mean, so it's hard for me to evaluate the choices that she makes because I am so ideologically right. opposed to the result. But yeah, in, in terms of like, yeah, this book gives us the most female characters that have like lines and like have a relationship and a cohesion. Yeah. No, that part of it's fantastic. Yeah. When it comes to consent, is this book more Robin Thicke or Marvin Gaye? Oh, it's totally consensual. Again, <laughs> well, except the fact that she does jump oh, yeah. on. Him. She does. She is there for Get it. Get that dick. Get it. Get it, Lindy. Yeah, she is there for it. Okay, how bad? Uh, yeah, how badly are you judging your mama for reading this book? This does seem like a well. I mean, this, this is a mama book. Is like the, a, the, the most yeah. the most grand grand of <laughs> this is a mama book for sure. I mean, again, it's very florid writing. There's no like, yeah. And there's a lot of attention paid to the sex, but it's very. Oh, that's for yeah, more of our. No, I mean, but it's not um, like. A mama wouldn't feel that there was anything distasteful in it, no. and would probably enjoy the patriotic theme. Yeah, I guess put it that way. Would Scarlett Johansson be in the movie? Whitest Navy I've ever seen. I know. I was talking about, I was like, and that's the thing. And like, maybe, you know, I don't know. You get all these characters, like these women. Uh, yeah. They don't describe them. So maybe yeah, some of them are people maybe, of color. You know. I mean, it tends, especially like uh, before we started to fight our forever wars in the specific places we fought them, there were a lot more um, military wives um, who were, uh, you know, from different countries. Yeah, exactly. I mean, because of where we've been fighting wars, it is not a great idea if you were fighting wars in the Middle East to go around, um, you yeah. know, like uh, looking at people's daughters. Although yeah. that wasn't a great idea in many of the places we we're at. But when I was a kid, I knew because of where we where we live, I knew 
lots of um, like Vietnamese and Indonesian yeah. and and Thai women who had married. Um, you know, people who were in the military and come home with them. And I guess this is just where they ended up. Um, so it's quite possible that some of these women were were not white, but uh, they did not. Uh, no, nobody was like, them. yeah, nobody was like given a name to let you know, like, hey, this is a, yeah. So, um, yeah, very white. And also it's like, you know, I, I guess this is the point in this where we can talk about the fact that it is, and jingoistic is the wrong word to describe this book because really it's about like the nitty gritty of relationships and not yeah. about the reasons why this carrier is going wherever it's going. But of course, you can't help but think, especially since this book is written in 1988, and you know, having having been in middle school for the Persian Gulf War, yeah, yeah that that always has to be at the back of your mind yeah. when you when you think about this kind of book. So it's it's there. It's not. This not it's what just the a rom- just like this romanticization of you know. The American military industrial complex, yeah. you know. Um, Funny that, like, he he's like, well, then I was like, why were we even there? But she doesn't say that about her bomb building job. No, she does not. <laughs> so, I mean, you know. Um, you're not leaving the house looking like that. I was so pissed that there was a quickie wedding and we didn't see her get a dress. We got a 90. Find a dress. We got that insane 90. We got her baseball. If you're going to have a quickie fucking wedding, I want to see you either go to the department store or yeah. somebody give you a dress. I want to find out where your dress came from. I was not happy about the lack of outfits in this book. No, just baseball outfit at 90. Doesn't really. even describe his fine-ass Navy outfits. No, there's no, like, appreciation Debbie. of that. And you know Debbie likes a fine you know, man in yeah, uniform. Debbie, Debbie, it's too pure. It's too pure for Debbie, I think. Oh, my God. No, it is not that pure for Debbie. <laughs> okay. Would your 12-year-old self have do- dog-eared any pages? They do it. Um, it's That's very, funny. it's florid, but then my 12-year-old self was not particularly picky. No, yeah, there's a lot of, like... Boob action. Yeah, he feasts on her breasts. He's a he's a breastfeeder. But he doesn't Easter. plunder them. There's also I'm like used to plundering. They are very much heavy petting and sucking on boobs. Gets her raring to go enough that like they can just do it. Like, I think there's some dry humping. Which well, I, there are, there is dry humping. I do but, enjoy like, a good dry humping scene. I have there, to say. there is no like it's one of those books. Okay, and this is not uncommon. There's in no downtown books, business. Where everything above the waist or clothed is really hot. And then yes. they actually get down to business. And, and then it's, it's just like, yeah. his, his raw masculinity. He, like, she reaches new heights. He, he does sheathe her. He, he is sheathed uh, in her. Yeah. Um, locked. He's also locked. At one point, he's a dog. At one point, is it, the, there is a weird verbiage that happens in it where he sees Susan, at, like, with... Or he sees he's they're at, with Susan and and Jeff and he sees her holding that baby, and he starts thinking about her and this is the way it's described. First, he talks about her like the assumption is that she's pregnant, obviously. But um, I was really surprised she wasn't pregnant, actually. Yeah, but like no, he he was imagining her pregnant. He talks about her heavy breasts, but then it says he sees her belly swollen with her his seed. Oh yeah, and I was like, wait, is he talking about like? Inflation business or like <laughs> yeah I, I that is probably actually what okay so I'll, I will confess that I read this book mostly half lit at the beach <laughs> so um I, my my recollection of it varies and I, I'm yeah. not talking about a course and a half or <laughs> yeah <laughs> right? no so I we, we took a couple boxes of wine to the beach but uh, so yeah I thought I remember now that you say that thinking the same thing I'm like whoa I've 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 read too much fanfic yeah like <laughs> is he talking about what I think he's talking about or is no, he talking about, he's like, yeah. talking about she's pregnant yeah. but like uh, so, they, he didn't realize we would come up with new forms of perversion in yes. this next century it's a brave new world so yeah there's nothing really like meh about it okay. Um, okay. Yeah. So what, what pairs nicely with a dumpster fire? Um, cores, obviously. Yeah, a this cores. Is a cores book two, two, two cores will get you two, sh- like two shitty, but a cores and a half is perfect. Yeah. And you, then, can you imagine seriously drinking two cores or like two natty lights or two? I, if you're a, if you're a fifteen year old year old girl, yes. If you are a thirty something year old Navy veteran, no, no, you are doing all kinds of crazy shit. Oh. There's a part in this book, y'all. I completely forgot this. So sorry to make this episode for a short book that has nothing in it really, really long. So there's a part where insane decisions are made. Insane decisions of telling people things are made. So we find out that Susan once got so mad at Jeff because Susan was pregnant with fucking twins at home, all feeling miserable. And Jeff describes to her in detail going oh to... Oh, my God. Like, <laughs> I forgot going about this. to, like, 
a Malaysian titty bar or something. And she's like, well, fuck you. Obviously, because, yeah. you know, when you go to a Southeast Asian titty bar and your wife is heavily pregnant, don't tell her. Just go to the titty bar. Like, that's fine. Or just be like, hey, we went inside. I don't like, know. It wouldn't have bothered me. I, well, it wouldn't. Maybe if I was, like, heavily pregnant, I'd be like, nah. And then our girl, Landy, right, said Jaff and is like, hey, oh, yeah. <laughs> we're going to the male strip review. I assume the same one from Lightning that lingers. You know? Yeah, it was really funny. So that was kind of fun with it. But um, maybe that was kind of like a, you know, he, maybe she was kind of telling a joke, like, about. I like, feel like, yeah. yeah. Um, it was, that part was interesting. So I think, again. One and a half cores is what goes with this. And then lastly... I like to picture they're, like, crossing a line ceremony on this ship. And in this world yeah. where one and a half cores gets you drunk, I assume you drink, like, one and a half cores out of, like, the fattest, like, dude's belly button. And that's how you get your shell well, back. Yeah, I think for, like, 3,000, like, because there's, like, yeah, like, th- there's, like, th- uh, yeah, 3,000 people on this carrier. So, you know, if we're doing the Navy Coors math, then really yes. what you just need is a case and a half of beer. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's that's going to get them it's shitty. It's fine. So it's going to be awesome. <laughs> we're going to throw it down. 20 bucks gets everybody on that boat. You know what you get? Up. You get that little communion. I mean, so I grew up Presbyterian, so it's grape juice. But, like, you get that little, that yeah, little. You know, yeah, your communion wine. Yeah, that's what you get. And that's enough Coors to make you. It's, it, it's wild to me because, like. <laughs> The biggest differential, and it's still like when you go to um, when you go to you know what do we call you? But when you go to Protestant church, y'all get those little tiny cups. Yes, we do. Like well, no, we're we're still gobbling. Like we're still gobbling. Well, I know you are now. No, well, but <laughs> I don't a disease abroad. Well, yeah, but I mean, like up until two years ago, yeah. now, like well, okay, so on special, and the only thing is like only, we just wipe it off. We just like it's the a cloth on wipe. special occasions at Protestant churches. Sometimes the preacher gets like a wild hair and we'll do the intinction thing. Oh like, we yeah, we won't put our mouth on it, but we'll do the dip. So like by the end, I think of they it, do. Like they do do the. I think they. I think they probably have started to do it. But, but it's only for like when 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 your pastor like really kind of like wants to like We're do doing a thing. It. Yeah. yeah. Normally, you get the little thing of grape juice. Yeah. Yeah, the little mm-hmm. t- and they've got the little, like, I, I used to go to, like, because um, all my friends went to it, and I was in the youth group, and the guy that was, like, ran our youth group, we went to youth group, not because of, like, his amazing whatever, but because he worked, he was an executive for Lance Crackers, and so he'd always bring the <gasps> best snacks, so, like, oh, that sounds great. everybody was in this, but, like, it was the wildest thing, because, like, at the pew, there was this little thing that stuck out. Yeah. Because oh, yeah. those tiny yeah, cups in it. And I was like, yeah. what is this magic? Like It's for your little little plastic thing. <laughs> so we're like there's the thing that sticks out and it's for your hymnal and your Bible and then you get your little like, plastic. I was like, y'all got thing. a tray? Y'all got like a TV yes. tray? Yes. It was amazing. Okay. If we promised them to know how to throw <laughs> down on the grape juice. So <laughs> lastly, should a person or should a human being in the twenty first century read this book? I, I I'm neutral to this book. I mean it's it's inoffensive except of course for its like Top Gunness. Um, it, there's nothing in it that like it's gonna make you like spit out your fucking coffee and want to slap a bitch. It's and honestly, I did think that like it got much better in the back half. Oh my god, it was like I, again. I would I would honestly suggest it because not because of our main characters, because I, I thought that what was really good about it, what Debbie did really well in this book, was build a sense of community and build a sense of kind of understanding why these you know these military families are kind of like a world within a world because. This crisis that happens and everybody coming together and then these women, you know, and she goes, it's not just, oh, we have to, it, it's not florid and romantic. No, they're just, they are just there. They're yeah. Just, you're, you know, the, so I really, the real en- ones. I, I enjoyed that aspect. Yeah, of that. I, I also did. I, I enjoyed that part of it as well. It has never occurred to Debbie McCumber that even in the 80s, there were women in the Navy. Yeah, <laughs> there's never even 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 a blip on her radar. It has not even made a tiniest dent in her brain. <laughs> what is you it? You could have a navy husband, and I feel like this is a good place to close it out. But um, I remember going to visit because my brother again was in the navy, and it's one of the most formative conversations I've ever had with a person. Um, I think I was about ten or eleven, and so I got to fly on a plane by myself. Whoo! Yes, and my brother's in, like, I was flying from Charlotte to Jacksonville, and I was going to stay with my brother in Jacksonville. And so, you know, I, 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 very big deal, you know. And I was sitting next to a lady, this woman, and she had on, like, this uniform. 
And I was like, because we're going down to like Jacksonville, which is this big hub. And I think because I was I was 11 and my brain had been trained for this. I looked at her and I was like, oh, are you like, you know, I was like, what do you do? And she's like, I work on planes. I was like, oh, are you a stewardess? Oh. And she was like, no, I'm a pilot. And I was like. <laughs> Whoa! Like, it had never really occurred to my 11-year-old brain or Mm -hmm. 10-year-old, like, that's a thing that could happen. And I was just like, this is the coolest thing ever. So, you know, while I enjoyed this book, I wish that, the you know, hopefully one of her latter books kind of talks about women in the military. Because while we love our loyal nine Navy so much, we also love the, you know, the women that do this. And because... While they do it, they don't get big romantic books and that. I kind mean, of imagine I and I don't know any um, personally any military husbands. It must be profoundly alienating. Oh yeah, that, like military spouse ma- magazine is just all all pink razors. Yeah, right? it's like, still like the yeah, there's these crazy uh, like like old, let alone how difficult it is. Like if you are a military spouse in a same sex relationship, yeah, that must be the, the gender norm. Very so. very alienating. I, I will leave it to give you the most, and we will put this on our little website thing. What you need to do with your time right now is look up full mess dress for lady marines and i forget if this is the 40s or 50s there was like you know the the really fancy outfit yeah. there is a full length ball gown skirt and a tiara I love it. It's amazing. It is actually the most boss uniform you've ever seen. <laughs> that's in your what life. when I take over. That's got that. We're, that's yeah, gonna be it. That's we're gonna, gonna have be to it. required. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So again, this has been Bodice Stiflers, and we hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoy us. The ways that you can support us are to like and subscribe, um, leave a review. We love a review. It's a really easy way to help us get kind of aggregated. Make sure that you follow us on YouTube. Um, leave a comment that's not mean about Sydney Sheldon. We would love that. Um, <laughs> you can follow us. <laughs> People on, have no idea what you're talking about, but if you go to our YouTube, you'll find out. I know. <laughs> it's a nice little surprise. Go to the Sydney Sheldon one specific. Yeah, it's great. It's great. Um, you can follow us on Twitter at BTipplers. Follow us on Instagram, Bodice Tipplers. Follow us on Facebook at Bodice Tipplers. And if you're so inclined to throw a little bit of money our way, it's patreon.com slash bodice tipplers. Find more podcasts to love at frog.media slash podcasts.